Hi, I'm Jose Ochoa from Hope City Church in Sacramento. I want to welcome you, welcome you to my living room. Thank you for tuning in. Those of you that are on Sac Faith TV, those of you that are watching on YouTube, please don't forget to subscribe and to give me a big thumbs up, not a thumbs down. And please, if you could, do me a favor, write any comments. Anything, if you learn anything, or maybe I missed a, a big point, write down uh, whatever you have in the comment section. I appreciate it. And for those of you watching on Facebook, I love you guys. Thank you for joining. Before we get into the Word, I want to pray for you. Father God, I just pray for those that are watching on Sac Faith TV. I want to pray for those that are watching on YouTube and those that are watching on Facebook. I pray you bless them and their families. And I pray you prepare our hearts, even my heart, as I get ready to preach your word. I just, I just thank you for this opportunity to speak. And I just pray, God, that uh, you help us to understand what you have to say uh, to us this afternoon, this morning, this night. Amen. Hey, um, thanks again for joining me. The title of my message is Worship, worshiping the one who sits on the throne. Let me say that again. Worshiping the one who sits on the throne. I believe we were all created to worship. If we're not worshiping God, we're going to worship something. Maybe we're worshiping ourselves, others. Some people worship the dollar bill. They worship money. Money becomes an idol. But here in Revelation chapter 4, verse 1, we read about true worship, how worship looks like in heaven. Let's go there if we could, please. Revelation 4, 1. See, John has a vision of heaven. After these things, I looked, and behold, a door was standing open in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was like, a trumpet speaking with me. Oh, so now John hears a loud voice. It's the, the voice of God saying, Come, hear, and I'll show you the things which must take place after this. Immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne set in heaven, and the one who sat on the throne and he who sat on the throne was like jasper and sardis stone in appearance. And there was a rainbow around the throne in the appearance like an emerald. Around the throne were 24 thrones. And on the thrones I saw 24 elders sitting clothed in white robes. And they had crowns of gold on their heads. I'm going to just stop right there. And so John sees this big door open and he looks up to heaven and right when he's getting ready to walk through that door zap he somehow levitates and he's up there in heaven right away i mean growing up i used to watch star trek i know that, that i'm telling you my age i just turned 46 and so in star trek whenever they wanted to go to a different planet you know what if you ever watch star trek the guy would say, beam me up, Scotty. And then right away they'll press a button and the guy will be beamed up right away to a new planet or to the next planet. So we read that John is beamed up to heaven through the Spirit. And he sees God the Father on the throne. And the Bible says that he sees like a, a big giant rainbow over the throne of God. And then he sees the most finest jewels in the world. You see, em he sees uh, emerald, he sees jasper, he sees all these colorful stones, and he's trying his best to describe the presence of God. It, it must have been a thing of beauty. What's the most beautiful thing you, you ever witnessed in your life? Maybe the birth of your child, maybe you've been to the East Coast and you're able to see the sun rise over the ocean or maybe you've been at the Pacific Ocean 
and you've seen the sun set over the ocean. See, God is a thing of beauty. And so he's trying to use metaphoric language to, to describe the presence of God. He's like, it's like the most finest jewels in the world, sparkling. And I saw this beautiful light shining. He doesn't describe God's facial features, but he says it was the most beautiful light. And one day, you and I are going to experience exactly what John experienced in heaven. Yes, those of you that have put their faith in Jesus Christ, one day we're going to be with him forever. So here's my first point. John sees the glory of God. He sees the finest jewels. Jasper represents bright red. Ruby represents reddish brown. Uh, emerald is usually a greenish color. And then he sees the bright rainbow. Have you ever seen uh, a rainbow right after a storm? It's the most beautiful sight. So when we see Jesus in his glory, it's going to be the most beautiful sight. So what is the most beautiful thing you ever witnessed in your life? I know the most beautiful thing I've ever witnessed in my life was the birth of Josiah, the, my oldest son, the birth of my youngest son, Jaden. And I, I know when I get to see Jesus, it's going to be a time to celebrate. It's going to be a time of rejoicing. Like when my son was first born, I was so excited, so happy. See, heaven's not a boring place. It's an exciting place where there's a lot of rejoicing taking place. Right now, people are worshiping God. It's not a boring thing. Maybe you've been to a boring church where the worship stinks or it's kind of boring. Well, I'm here to tell you the worship in heaven is going to be amazing. And so John has this, this experience of heaven and he, he sees the glory of God. But here's one thing we need to know. If we want to experience God's glory, if you want to experience God's glory, we got to do one thing. Philippians 3.13 says this, But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead. I press towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Here's the question I have for you. Where is your focus? Are you focusing on heaven? Or are you focusing too much on the wrong things? I'm not saying we got to think of Jesus 24-7, 24 hours a day. But we should be thinking about him throughout the day. We should be thinking about God, not just on Sundays, but we should be thinking about him throughout the week. John is having this experience with God. He sees Jesus in his glory. Now Paul is saying, hey, we're all going to experience him someday, but let's forget about the past. Let's focus on our future. Let's focus on Jesus Christ. He is the prize. He is who we are living for. Amen? Here's the next thing I noticed in this passage. John sees incredible worship. We read in Revelation 4, 8, if you could go there. The four living creatures, each having six wings, were full of eyes around and within. And they do not rest day or night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is to come. I don't know how it's going to sound like, but these are these, we, we read that there are these four living creatures that are giving God worship. Whenever the living creatures give glory and thanks to God, who sits on the throne, who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him and who are sitting on the throne, worshiping him, who lives forever and ever. Remember, you're going to live forever and ever with Jesus. And they cast their thrones before the throne of God. Here's the question I have for you. What do you need to cast before the throne of God? 
We all need to cast something down before God. See, a, a crown of gold. See, these elders, these 24 elders, are wearing crowns of gold around their heads. That's a good thing. That's worth a lot of money. That's priceless. But they're like, God, we're not worthy to wear these crowns of gold. So they take these crown of gold and they throw it down before the Father's feet in heaven. Maybe you need to throw something down before God this morning. Maybe you need to throw something down before God this afternoon. Maybe you need to throw something down before God this night. See, I need to throw down my family. Not a body slam Josiah or Jaden. But just say, God, they're your children. I trust you. I trust that, that you love them more than I love them. You're going to take good care of them. I got to throw my future, throw my life before the Father and say, whatever I have, it, it all belongs to you. My house belongs to you. My car belongs to you. My career belongs to you. My health, my body, my mind, my soul belongs to you. What, do you, what good thing do you need to throw down before Jesus? See, these elders throw their crowns of gold before the Father. And we all need to throw something down before God. And sometimes we need to throw down negative things before God, don't we? Isaiah 6, 5, we read, Woe to me! So he's, he's crying out to God, I am ruined! For I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among people of unclean lips. And my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. So he has a, a John type of experience. Before John had that experience, Isaiah is in heaven, and he's like, whoa, what am I doing here? I'm a sinner. I have used filthy language. I have unclean lips. I have sinned before God. I need God's mercy. I need His forgiveness. And what did God do? God showed Isaiah forgiveness. And God has shown you forgiveness. 2,000 years ago when Jesus went to the cross, He said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. See, you have a right to heaven through the blood of Jesus Christ. You are a child of God. You are a daughter of God. It's through grace, through faith, we are saved, not of our works. So sometimes we need to throw our anxieties before God. We need to throw our sins before God. We need to be real with God. We can't hide our sins from God. Isaiah could not hide his sin from God, neither could you. Hebrews 12, 1 says this, Therefore, since we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, did you know every day people are watching you? Not just people, angels are watching you. Let us throw off everything that hinders us, every sin that so easily entangles us. What do you need to throw down before Jesus? What do you need to throw down before the Father? What do you need to throw down before the Holy Spirit? And that let us run with perseverance, the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, who is the author and perfecter of our faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, the scorning and its shame, and now sits down at the right hand of the Father. Whoa, that's a beautiful passage. So, we learn that we need to throw down anything that's hindering our walk with God if we want to get to Jesus. Because sin has the power to make you fall. Sin has the power to drag you in the wrong direction. Sin has the power to take me to hell. But I'm not going to allow sin to take me there. I got to throw my anxieties before God. I need to confess my sins before God. 1 John 1, 9 says, If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us 
of all unrighteousness. There's forgiveness in Jesus Christ. We read in 2 Corinthians 4.1, Therefore, having the ministry by the mercy of God. Woo! Have you experienced God's mercy? If you want to experience God's mercy, go no further than the cross. At the cross, you experience God's mercy because God is a God of mercy. So we read on. So don't lose heart. Don't give up. We have renounced disgraceful, unhanded ways. The word unhanded in Greek simply means hidden, secret. We need to confess our secrets, our dark secrets to God. I remember in 1994, Madonna came out with this song called Secret. It goes something like this. Mm -hmm. My baby got a secret. Mm -hmm. My baby got a secret, secret. Okay, I don't sing like Madonna. But see, Madonna, she can't hide her secrets. You can't hide your secrets. Your baby can't hide his secrets or her secrets. See, everything is known to God. He's omnipresent. He's omniscient, all-knowing. So we might as well confess those sins to Jesus. We can't hide those sins even if we try. Here's the last thing I want you to know. John sees the Creator. We read in Revelation 4.11, You are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for you created some things. No, the translation in the Bible verse says, you have created all things. For you created all things, and by your will they exist and were created. So whether, if you're talking about an angelic creature that you can't understand, if you're talking about the killer whale, the white shark, a puppy, a cat, even a mouse, ants, Every single, every single creature on planet Earth was created for God and for His glory. And I want you to know that you were created for God's glory. You were created in the very image of God. Let me say it again. You were cr created in the image of God. So next time you, you look in the mirror, just remember that you were created in God's holy image. You are beautiful at your age. Whether you're 7 or 77 of age, you are beautiful in God's sight. Don't you forget it. We read here in Genesis 1, 27. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female. He created them. God has a female attribute. No, he has a female side to him. Like, he loves Females. He created all the females that you see in the world. Hallelujah. And He created all the men in the world that you see. Hallelujah. We are all created in the very image of God. I love what, what King David says in the Psalms. Psalms 51.10 Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. See, King David was broken. He committed sin. He committed adultery. He killed a man. I mean, he didn't do it himself. He got somebody to do it for him, which is just as bad. And he, he began to live this double life. And finally, a messenger, a prophet, a man of God confronted him and said, Hey, you can't hide that secret from God. And then he, he cried out to God, Forgive me. I have an unclean heart. Renew my right spirit within me. Did God not answer that prayer? God did answer that prayer and began to change David. And God could change you. God could change me. He is the creator. He can make us new. You can start all over. God is a God of second chances, third chances, fourth chances. And the good news is, God loves you and he wants to have a relationship with you. 
Just as uh, God had a relationship with John, God had a relationship with David, God wants to have a relationship with you that exists not just for 70 years, but for eternity. Is that beautiful? I love what Mark Batterson says in his new book, Win the Day. Yeah, go, go, I got a homework assignment for you. Write this down, Win the Day, Mark Batterson. He wrote an amazing book called Win the Day. And in his book, he says this, prayer is the way we write history before it, it happens. Let me say it again. Prayer is the way we write history before it happens. So here, John is seen in the spirit in heaven. And then David here is here praying, God, make me new. And God started to change him from the inside out. And now, if you were to go to Israel today, the Jews wear the star of David. They recognize him as king. And so they recognize that through his bloodline, a king is coming, a Messiah is coming. And I'm here to tell you that Messiah has came. His name is Jesus Christ. God has called you to be a history maker. And it starts by praying and it starts by worshiping God. Because when you start to worship God, things are going to change in your life for the better. When you start to pray, things are going to change in your life for the better. I want to encourage you to do this. Give God praise seven times a day. Yes, every hour of the day or when you remember, praise God seven times a day. So you can say, all right, God, thank you for my family. Thank you for my job. Thank you for my children. Thank you, God, for blessing my finances. Thank you, God, for the Bible. Thank you, God, for church. And thank you for Jesus. You know, it doesn't take long. That, take me, that took me 10 seconds. Start praising God seven times a day, and I promise you, it will change your life. You'll, you'll begin to have a better attitude towards people, towards yourself, and, and towards, towards life in general. I just started doing this last week, and it's working for me. I, I know it will work for you. And so we're called to worship God. We're called to give Him praise. And we're called to cast our crowns down at the feet of Jesus to the one who sits on the throne. Let me ask you again, what do you need to cast down before the Father? What do you need to cast down before the Son? What do you need to cast down before the Holy Spirit? Here's a beautiful thing that I read in the Bible, and I'm, maybe you haven't read the Bible. I want to encourage you, if you haven't read your Bible, read it from Genesis all the way to Revelation. It might take you a year. It might take you two years. It might take you three years. But read it for yourself. We, we read in the, the Gospels that Jesus was willing to cast himself on a cross. He allowed the Roman soldiers to throw him on a cross. He allowed himself to be put in a tomb. But death can hold him down. On the third day, he came back to life to prove that he's alive and well and to, to prove that he is the Messiah. He is the Son of God. He is the way to heaven. He overcame death. And so will you. If you put your faith in Jesus Christ, you're promised eternal life. No judgment, just grace. But if you, if you decide to reject Jesus, who's going to save you? You can't save yourself. No religious leader on this planet has the power to save you. But Jesus is not just a religious man. He is the Son of God. He is God incarnate, the second person of the Trinity. Let me pray with you. If you'd like to receive Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, if you want to go to heaven and experience what John experienced, say this prayer with me. Say, Dear God, I love you. Thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross for my sins. Thank you, Jesus, for overcoming death on the third day. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. 
Teach me your ways. Help me to repent of my sins. And please change my heart like you did for David. In your name I pray. Amen. If you said that prayer for the first time, I want to invite you to church tomorrow, to Hope City Church, 3750 Roslyn Court, Sacramento. You can also visit us at hopecitysac.net. I want to meet with you. I want to give you a Bible. I want to get to know you. And so come visit our church tomorrow. We start at 12 o'clock from 12 to 1. We are, we're in mass. We're practicing social distancing. We're keeping it safe. Nobody at church has ever got COVID. Praise God. I mean, people have got COVID outside church, but it's never happened at church. So yeah, come visit our church. We'd love to have you. Thank you for joining us. Uh, if you like what you're seeing, we, we want to continue this ministry. Uh, it does cost money to be on cable. If you like to donate money uh, towards our cable program, visit HopeCitySAC.net. We appreciate all those that have given to our church. I love you. Until next time, bye.